All right, Tio, I've seen you enough on this show over the last few weeks, and I think you've been a trooper. I think you've been a superstar at putting up with this nonsense, but there's been a lot of shade thrown to your conference of choice, which would be the ACC. I think to quote a certain Rob Doster, I think there was a sentence said on this very show last night that the ACC may be a one bid league. That's ridiculous. Stop the nonsense. (laughs) What are we talking about? There's too much. There's too much going on right now. And then it is the same Rob Doster last night, Greg, who said everybody sucks. Everybody, not everybody can suck. Somebody has to be good. <laughs> it's not one of these things. Like ACC is going to be fine. Had it, did it have a bad non-con? Of course it did. But we're going to be okay. We're going to be fine. Let's just be. Let's just be clear from the from the jump. <laughs> Yeah, well, somebody has to emerge, right? And that's the question is who's going to emerge outside of Duke? One team made their case tonight. That would be the North Carolina Tar Heels, fresh off of a blowout victory at Boston College. UNC seems to be the team that nationwide basketball fans agree. They're probably the second best in the ACC, but I've heard very varying levels of belief in this Tar Heel team. I think you wouldn't be crazy to say this is a lock NCAA tournament potential second weekend type team. I don't think you'd be crazy to say one or two things go wrong and this team finds themselves on the bubble. Tio, as the ACC resident in-house expert, where do you stand on the Tar Heels right now? Those, first of all, those are really strong words. <laughs> Second of all, uh, I, I, Steve, I think you said this in our group chat, 0-1-3 against teams that are ranked in the top 25. And I, I, you know what? I have come off as a Carolina hater previously. Probably rightfully so. But at the same time, those guys are Tarzan until they play other Tarzans, and they turn into Jane real quick. And you saw how how that went against Kentucky. Now, look, Boston College, they've had some issues. They haven't been able to practice. I'm not sure about all the particulars, but that's a team that beat Notre Dame. So you almost have to give them a little bit of credit. Of course, Notre Dame isn't great either, but this, this isn't a Notre Dame part of the show. This is a North Carolina part of the show. They still had to show up and win. And they've shown that whenever they can stay in front of opposing teams' guards, they can be really good because their bigs are really good. Offensively, this team can score. But whenever their guards start getting beaten and beaten consistently, they start to back down in a hurry. And you worry about the mental toughness of their backcourt because they start – I mean, you saw what severe Wheeler just hurt their feelings, it seemed like, and then they just stopped playing. Yeah, the, the one thing about Carolina, and we, we talked about it a little bit off air, is, is the big numbers is, you know, they've got to get a big win. You know, I mean, 0-3 against the top 25, Tennessee, Purdue, Kentucky. Obviously, they need Michigan to get it going, you know, so that Michigan win proves to be a big win later later in the year. But like Terrence touched on, there's no way the ACC is going to be a one- or two-bid league. These Power Five leagues, I mean, wasn't it last year everybody was talking about the Pac-12, and then they have – two teams in the elite, elite eight, one team in the final four, you know, it's, you know, the, the power five, those to go through the gauntlet of those teams. And you got to go at Duke at Carolina home, Louisville, you know, at Florida state, uh, you know, we just got off with, with Greg McDermott, their legs, their four games, it's at Marquette home Providence at Villanova at Xavier, you know, those four games, you know, you put four game stretches, whether it's the PAC 12, the big 12, the ACC, it is hard, and it is hard to manage, especially, you know, in this landscape with all the COVID and all the uncertainty. And so, you know, maybe it's a year they only get three to five teams in, uh, but I can't see them being a one- or two-bid league. But they need – it's kind of like certain teams – certain leagues need certain teams to be good. Carolina and Duke got to be elite in the ACC. And then everybody else, you know, Florida State's been so good of recent – recent time they, they need to be back to where you know Louisville those teams you know so the league gets a little bit more credit top to bottom but you know a lot of a lot of preseason talk on Virginia Tech they've got to get going um, but Carolina the one thing when you look at the numbers today they shot it well which is a thing in the preseason people were talking about how well is Carolina going to shoot it I think through Baycott Baycott Love Manic, you know RJ Davis they really stepped up and played today and Garcia went out and then the other thing, they only gave up 20 points in the first half. And I don't care in Division One basketball, at the Power Five level, you're only giving up 20 points in the first half. You're playing some defense. And that's one of the things, Carolina, we were on them with a couple weeks ago. I So I believe in this North Carolina team, to your guys' point, in the biggest moments, 
they've sort of put their tail between their legs and ran in the other direction to me, which maybe that says more about their toughness than anything else. But I do believe in the talent. I believe in the skill. I think Caleb Love has shocked me how efficient he's been this season. I was a very anti Caleb Love person heading into the season. I just didn't think he was ever going to be able to be a high quality scorer on a good team. Thought he was going to be a good stats, bad team guy or a role player on a really good team. But he's 43% from the floor. He's 82% from free throw, 41% from three. He's their second leading scorer. I think I'm buying into the fact that Caleb Love could be the best backcourt guy on a team that has some success in March. To your point, though, T.O., I don't know that we're going to get any opportunity to see this team be anything other than the Tarzan that beats up on James because they've already missed those opportunities, right? Unless you consider Michigan that one big resume booster for them, but right now Michigan doesn't look like that at all. But do you think that bodes well for them in ACC regular conference play, though? Like if they are the team that rises to the challenge and beats their chest when they go up against someone who's not their size. I don't know that there's many teams their size in this conference. Uh, I mean, confidence is a, is certainly a big player when it comes to college kids and Carolina could play their way to 16 wins in this league, the way it's going. I mean, you got to keep in mind too, Carolina is much more talented than a lot of teams in the conference. And, and that, that's not saying something crazy or demeaning to anybody else or any other team in the conference. It's just the fact that you're at Carolina, you're going to get better players a lot of times than others are. It's just they're kind of like the school bully at this point. They get punched in the mouth. Okay, he's going to shut up and he's going to go back to his corner. That's what Carolina is right now. They're the school bully. If they get hit back, there's not a whole lot of fight left to give. That's kind of what everybody's worried about right now. And that, quite frankly, guys, that's what we've seen. Purdue punches, in a, punches them in the mouth, they're gone. Kentucky punched them in the mouth twice, and they, they went home. They didn't even go back to their seat. They went home. Like, it, it was just – I'm curious to see how, besides Duke, who's going to be the team that gives them that opportunity? Well, those three losses, like you touched on, they, they, they were beat soundly in mm -hmm. those three games. And when you look ahead at their schedule, if you just take their next five games, you know, at Notre Dame, home Virginia, home Georgia Tech, at Miami, who's won eight out of nine, mm -hmm. uh, at Wake Forest, which had gone to a great start but dropped their first two ACC games, and the next five games, what's a top 25, top 50, NET, Ken Palm, AP top 25 coaches poll win that's ahead of them over the next three weeks? And, you know, that'll go take us almost to late January where maybe they don't have a quality, quality win. But that doesn't, if you go 15 and three, 16 and two, 14 and four in the ACC, you are a legit basketball team. And by the time all it's all, by the time it's all said and done too, coach, like their confidence is going to be sky high. They're going to win 15, 16 yeah. games in the conference. They're going to go into the tournament. They could be a second weekend team because they can overwhelm you. It's just a matter of if they feel like guarding or not. That's what it's come down to for North Carolina. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see it play out. I think this team's clearly two in the ACC. Do they have the ceiling of jumping up and being 1B at some point? Maybe that depends on how they fare in those games against Duke. I doubt it, but I still think, you know, a very solid resume at the end of the year, if you go whatever it is, 16-4, 15-5 in ACC play, beat all the teams that aren't ranked teams, uh, they're going to be sitting pretty and potentially still get a 4-5 or five seed in the NCAA tournament. They've got the talent to do whatever they can from there. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Let's move to 